Okay, we shall start now. So, uh, today is what? November 4th, 2019. I checked the calendar in the morning and found that we have just four classes, including this one. Okay, time flies. Uh, this semester seems to be the semester that we use a lot of teaching time uh, <laughs> compared to other semester. Well, uh, and later and later and later, I'm gonna add more and more and more things to the notes. I'm gonna upload more in the later years. Okay, so you can come back. I mean, like come back to the YouTube and check for the update there could be some updates uh, made right so you 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 be like at the latest version uh, all the time uh, actually this is also good for those well in in the past 10 years in my well first batch uh, the content of the clause is not is not as much as this year well it, it's always adds up more and more and more and more uh, and yeah over the past 10 years uh, the cost gets bigger and bigger and bigger uh, so no wonder why structural dynamics and earthquake engineering will, will be that big I mean like <laughs> you need a lot of makeups because uh, as time goes then uh, we have more content to talk actually this class compared to the time that I was uh, PhD student uh, back in Texas. Uh, the computer method course, it, it's exactly the same name. Okay, The name is, the course title is Computer Method for Structural Analysis. Not as rigorous as the course I offer over here. Uh, so uh, <laughs> I am pretty sure that uh, the content of the course and Every single details that I, I gave to you will adds up. It 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 could be more than what the university in well other university is gonna provide you. All right, so uh, we sorry we come back uh, last time. We had the situation. Uh, we 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 considered this frame this frame in the last time, but in the last time we know explicitly the axial force that that were applied onto the columns member. So we have the proportion of the force applied over here and over here. We determine the buckling lead uh, buckling buckling load okay using I can buckling uh, technique and then we switch around we change the distribution of the axial force column force and we found that the buckling load of the frame depends also on the distribution of the column force all right uh, that's the thing. So the eigen buckling of the frame not only just depends on the frame configuration, geometry, uh, member properties, but also depends on the, the distribution of the axial load. And after we exercise the uh, eigen buckling uh, techniques, I also apply the horizontal force to the frame. So as the horizontal force is applied, then it disturbs the system. First of all, you have the first order deformation. Okay, so the frame sway, and then that first order deformation causes you the second order deformation, which is caused by the effects from the axial load okay but not only that uh, it caused you the first order deformation second order deformation and those things cause you the well so second order moment in the beam so 
the distribution of the axial force was changed. It was disturbed by the moment in the beam because as you have moments in the beam, you have the shear force. And the shear force in the beam also come back as the axial force in the member. So uh, yes, the shear force came in. It changes your axial load. So you revise your calculation because the first round calculation was made uh, by assuming that the axial load distribution is as uh, as we can see, but actually, uh, if we say that it is 5p on the left, 3p on the right, uh, it ends up 5p and then with some uh, portion of the shear force which is caused by the uh, lateral force and also the second, second order moment. All right, so that's what that's what we did and I request you to do homework so you can plot the you can track the limit state of your structure so that is the way you can determine the capacity of your structure under the stability issue uh, actually uh, this is the same way we work in uh, reinforced concrete structure or the steel structure uh, we can write up the deformation versus the apply, apply load. And this uh, gives us the idea where and what load that structure is not uh, in a serviceability uh, con how to say? is no longer usable. Uh, so for today, uh, we are going to deal with iterative solution for another time. Okay, but for this time, uh, let's let us talk about the problem uh, here. So we do not have the horizontal load over here. We can have it, right? We can we can add it in if you want. Uh, but here I just initially put the apply distributed load like this so what we gonna see it could be first of all you can run the structural analysis of the frame structure and then uh, you in, uh, include the second order effect in there that means uh, for example for this frame initially you don't know at all about the axial load in both columns you got to first guess and then we guess and then we we refine the solution uh, using the iterative approach and that is one step and later on if you want to find out the buckling load of this frame then you're gonna have many steps of what I just mentioned so you will run structural nonlinear uh, geometric structural analysis, but you will have the incremental loading apply to the system. So you start with small load and increase the load, and then you iterate until you get the converge solution, and then you apply more load again, and then you iterate until you converge the solution, and then step up, step up, step up. So the low load or the load that is compared to very small compared to the buckling load you will find that you need just maybe one or two iterations in order to get the nice convergence but uh, when your load is close to the uh, buckling or when it is close to the instability you will need quite many iterations so let's let's see and talk about this one in here oh by the way Sivaram the uh, email you sent me I checked everything was alright already so there's nothing wrong with the, the, the metrics okay uh, well 
So the aim of this one, uh, we're gonna conduct structural analysis, nonlinear structural analysis, and then we're gonna iterate this. Okay, so okay, over many steps until we get the convergence. All right. So first of all, uh, we're gonna put this. We we can use the infrastructure we had from the last time. Okay. Uh, so element number one, uh, we input the force. The element number two is tied up with number one. Uh, element number three, we well we ignore the axial force as it is really really s small, negligible. Uh, number four, we add in uh, zero axial force, and this ties up with the number four. Okay, it looks good. Uh, the matrix assembly over here we take off the degree of freedom number one and three uh huh uh, for number two we don't incorporate it and this moment and the horizontal displacement degree of freedom were taken off All right so uh well why is it okay? Conditional formatting, clear rules. So uh, this infrastructure will be used. Uh, the thing is that over here, I guess this is a force vector in here. So we are going to come and deal with it. Uh, as this is a externally apply load then the fix and reaction will be added in okay we, we're gonna get the zero minus the fix and reactions so let's take a look at the fix and reaction what do we have in here well as the uh, degree of freedom along the y-axis was disabled since we said just said that the axial force uh, the structure is Axially rigid. Okay, you you can you can work on the six by six uh, stiffness matrix for the members. It's fine. Uh, you can still turn on the axial de deformations of the system. It is also fine. I just want to simplify this problem in here because I want to focus on the ge geometric nonlinearities. But it doesn't mean that. Uh, we cannot include the axial deformations uh, when we consider the nonlinear geometry, right? I don't want you to get get me wrong. I just want to make the problem size make it small and simplify my calculations because the axial deformation will be quite negligible in here, as the well, the flexure seems to be the mode that govern uh, the deformation it is the big bigger part ah, so uh, what you have well the shear force will not be will not be included in here because the uh, shear reactions are aligned with the vertical degree of freedom that I didn't include in this problem here so it's not there but you're gonna have to bring you L square over 12 what is the fix and this fix and reaction goes in the counterclockwise direction so you're gonna get the plus W L square over 12 and then on the other side uh, minus W L square over 12 and that's gonna be in uh, which degree of freedom? 1, 2, 3, horizontal 4, vertical 5, so it's going to be degree of freedom number 6, right? Number 6, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, so 6 and 9. So number 6 is Huh? What? Oh, 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 we have this, right? Over here, 1, 2, 3, okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so it's a 9 and 12. 9, which is this one here. So I. And 12, which is just 
right next to. So we have the zero minus the W. Okay. Anyway, uh, now let's take a look at the W. I think I'm gonna centralize, put everything over there. So the load W. Uh, how should it look like? W is in the unit of uh, distributed load, load per unit length. And as it is per unit length, the load P is given by EI over L square. So this will be given in terms of EI over L uh, cubed then. Right? So the unit is consistent. So that depends. You want to use whatever but just make sure that the unit is conform with the uh, rest of the calculation so the w will be given in terms of this one then you need some sort of scaling number uh, so last time we found that the buckling load was somewhere around what zero point 4.5 okay okay all right so uh, that's the buckling that's the force in one column uh, then uh, the W let's say if the W is multiplied by the L which is okay 5L uh, WL over 2 that will be distributed to each of them just a rough calculation WL over 2 Okay, L is 5L, so I think of L over 2 like 3L. Okay, so 3L multiply by, I then divide by 3L out. Okay, and then what do I get? Divide by 3. So 0.4 divided by 3 should be 0 0.1. Okay, so let me start from maybe somewhere 0 0.03. Uh, so just want to keep the number not to not too high then uh, the structure will not lose the stability at the at the very first step I work on it right so if this is the W then the fixed end reactions for the this beam here is W multiplied by L which is 5L W L square over 12 this is equals to W times 5 times, well, let's say times 25, WL squared over 12. Okay, you end up with this, and it is in the unit of just over L, right? 0 0.6, 0 0.0625 EI over L. This turns out to be the moment unit, uh, which is uh, the fixed end reactions down there. Let me just bring you back here. So this is zero, and then minus minus this number, and another one is the zero. Uh, if I okay plus uh, that number okay so the fixed end reaction was then moved to the left hand side to the externally applied force vector which is all zero in here then you get the sign of the fixed end reaction switch and you okay end up with this force vector so now we can we solve okay uh, this is the solution to the given configuration you have the stiffness matrix you have the force vector this is the solution the thing is that this solution is not correct yet because if you come up to here at the element number three 
at the element number three, uh, we need to figure this out a little bit more. Uh, let me just, we need more space. Uh, insert and shift cell to the right. And insert and shift cell to the right. And another time. Oh, no, done. Insert and shift cell to the right. Okay. Uh, this one is not usable. So uh, I pick up the degree of freedom, which are the rotations. 0.167, okay, come from here, and 0.181 come from down there, all right? So these are the degree of freedom we came up with uh, as we solve the system. We multiply these two, and then what else do we need to incorporate? We have the fixed end reactions. And the fixed end reactions we have, which is, it, it's got to be the WL, so you, I, come, I come back. W, which is this one, right? Multiplied by L. What is the L? 5L, right? Multiplied by 5, okay? WL over 2. So the over 2 is 0 0.5 multiplied by W multiplied by L. And the uh, fixed end reaction points upward, okay? And this one is actually the same. So we have this part multiply, and we have this part which we're supposed to be actually like this. Okay. And the uh, fix and reactions for the moment, we can just take it here. And this is equal to minus of this one. So this is the fix and reactions. So finally, you can determine the externally applied forces at the nodal points. Uh, so this used to be matrix multiplication of that thing, and then you add it up with this one. Uh, because this is on your right-hand side, you have K times U plus fixed end reactions. So you now have the updated uh, figures for the <coughs> external force. And then we look at the numbers as this one is actually pointing upward, right? You can see the number is positive. This one means upward reaction. And also on the right hand side, you have the upward shear force. Okay, so the, the sign, you should be serious about it. So what will the column feel will be this one? So you have additional force to the column, uh, which is pi o seven seven well something. So I'm gonna write this one. Somewhere there. So Axial, uh, okay, shear, 
cheer force from the members. Uh huh. And it is in this unit, no? So I write it this way equal to this one, right? And then this makes a additional axial force to the column number one being <coughs> again I got to manually type this one in and this one is going to be now we have zero uh, it start from zero <coughs> And then we look at the element number three. So I will copy this. Oh, no, not number three. It was supposed to be number four. Uh, so the figure will be taken from for the number four from this one eh? okay on the right hand side enter mm. and then you just put 0 0.0759 well we will not get the convergence in the first iteration anyway and then this one is equal to this one okay if you have something like predefined, you have the W and you have uh, the apply axial load as a point load like this all together, then you will put this part in there first to make it converge. Uh, well, as, as you know that this part of the force will be com coming directly to the column, then you put that f part in first. But still, even though you don't do that uh, as the solution is corrective over steps then you keep correcting the axial force keep updating the axial force if you assume all zero axial force and then you update later that that will work out too the thing is that the better you assume the force I mean the closer you assume to the reality uh, the better that the faster convergence you will obtain so uh, here it is updated let's see okay uh, then this is the W uh, what do we want to see I uh, the shear force from here all right okay so right now I think the system just work and you can see that as I update the shear force into the axial force of the columns now the new shear force changes but not drastic right so initially we assume 0 and we get 0.07 and then this just change a little bit so it is 0 0.073 I put it in here and I look at this one um, okay uh, wait, 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 wait. it is okay but if I change one at a time, then the, the second one will be just... Uh, now the solution is updated already. Uh, I, I, I just want to put both of them in together at the same time. So, okay. This was supposed to be 0.0 
0.073 I will copy and paste it in there and this was supposed to be 0.0759 okay uh uh 0 0.076 six nine well seven seven okay all right so i drop it in point oh seven seven how about up here point oh seven three uh -huh. so if we put point oh seven three we have some minor adjustment like that point oh seven three three we will put this in later okay if we put in here then the number will be will be changing uh, this one point oh seven six seven okay so six seven three three okay so number swing just a little bit seven three three seven three two eight okay so it's up to you if you want to 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 keep working on this more uh, uh maybe i give it the last round seven two okay next round we're gonna update this one to here and this is uh two eight all right so to add come down here two I add the two okay looks good now it doesn't change and here doesn't change okay so the match is very nice now we accept this solution uh, we can come down to another page which is a summary page we will plot between the magnitude w and the displacement so the displacement again i think that the uh, displacement that is sensitive to the stability of this frame is the displacement at the degree freedom number seven so the DOF7 will be taken actually if you want to if you want to monitor other deformation that will also work and that also useful for you you can try looking at other deformation plot versus the load okay uh, keep it keep it a homework okay make it a homework then so last time we just plot a uh, horizontal uh, DOF7 versus the P this time you're gonna plot DOF7 versus the W and this DOF maybe uh, try this horizontal displacement degree freedom at this point so it is DOF4 okay so plot DOF4 versus W DOF6 versus W DOF7 versus W and DOF9 versus W I just want you to plot to change the horizontal axis some might not be the good indicator to define the instability of the frame because it is not sensitive to the uh, sway right but some might be good indicator so it is actually the choice of picking picking up the displacement indicator to define the failure of your structure so you will see some might not be so good then you will not see the sharp uh, the rapid increase of the deformation or the rotation as the load progress yeah. 
because that is the place where we say that the structure is unstable and ready to collapse. If you pick up the wrong one, not the good one, not the sensitive one, then it might show just the mild nonlinearities, and then you thought that your structure can can go further. But the thing is that even though you pick up the bad indicator, your analysis when you put too much load in your structure, then you find a hard time, right? You find it a hard time to get the convergence, or you may not be able to get the convergence at all. So you will know that, okay, your indicator might not be a good choice. It doesn't show the unstable condition, but the equation solving tells you that your system is unstable already. Okay, so try, try many indicators. It doesn't go exactly in the same way like this. Okay, for one which is less sensitive, you might not see the unstable uh, behavior. Yeah. Oh, why? Why is it there? Oh, I thought it was zero. So you should tell me earlier. My I, my eyes just looked through and I don't see the number seven. I saw like zero 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 zero. I was like, oh, okay. Oh, then, 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 then. Okay. Uh, just need to fix this a little bit then. All right, so lucky that that was so small fast, then we can fix it uh, easily. Pi o seven six seven seven. Okay, I would say. And here, actually, I can just move all of this thing up, right? I and then I do the centralize. So it should be tied up to that place, right? L5, okay. L5 is up there, okay. And then I put the displacement, DOF7. Uh, the value of this degree of freedom is given here. Uh -huh. Where? <coughs> this is DOF7. Ah, okay. <coughs> so this will be point zero seven three. Okay. Ah, then drop in point o seven seven. Point o seven three. Okay, uh, 696, we add 04 there, 04 there, and this will be 696, right? Yes? WL. WL over 2 but yes it could be done but this is the same right uh-huh uh-huh okay that that will work okay that will work <laughs> but anyway just just uh I, I i leave it like this okay yeah that 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 is going to work if if we want to fully automate and do not want to put too many so okay let let let's just keep it this way uh then w is 0.03 And the solution degree of freedom seven is this one here. Okay, 
DOF7 and W. Okay, all right. So maybe we start with a smaller W. 0.01. Uh, so we put the 0.01, then uh, this was supposed to be 0.025. Six five, okay. It doesn't it doesn't take more time. Point zero two four three five. Okay, and then a little correction. Point zero two five eight four in here, and point zero two four one six drop in. Copy and paste in. Copy and paste in. Okay. Looks good. Okay. Nicely converge. So 0 0.01. 0 0.01. We get the solution. 139. Actually, we can drop this in first and select data, add data. The x-axis is a degree of freedom. The y-axis is the why it doesn't show the line. Okay, fine. Uh, just change the data, change the type. Um, uh, make it like this. Okay, uh, okay. Two dots. Ah, uh, point O two. Sort of in between. So copy and paste. Value. Copy and paste. Value. And then I put this back in. I put this back in. Okay. Any change? Uh, again, uh, for another time. What value? Copy and paste value. And then take this one, put in. Okay, we're supposed to make it. Uh, like this okay copy this one and put in okay nicely converge so DOF3 is 0 0.03 uh, DOF7 looks quite linear so we it is way to go So further, point zero four. Ah, copy and paste value again. Copy and paste value again, and then we update this one. We update this one, and. Not converge yet, so paste and try to looks good, right? Not bad, not bad. Ah, uh, another time if you want, and then. Drop it in. Okay, nice. Uh, we get the solution to DOF7. I think it just took us more. Ah, okay. Now you can start seeing some some trace of nonlinearities. So we go further. Point o five. Eh, what? 0.05, alright, copy, paste here, we 
keep the values there and then we update all together paste copy and paste ah not good enough and then boop huh okay looks good so we get the converge solution for 0.05 ah some more Pi O six and then drop in and drop this in. Not good enough. Uh, I want something better. Actually, if you want to make some indicator that shows the mismatching between these two, uh, you can just make it like a percentage. Yeah? Absolute of uh, which one's gonna be the best? Okay, anyway, this minus this divide by uh, this one might be more correct. Uh, this and then you get the hundred multiplied by this. So this is percent. So very small percentage, then you can stop. Generally, when you uh, when you work with the so-called the iterative solution, uh, that will be the convergence criteria. So actually, this could be called a convergence criteria if we want. It depends on well, it's up to you. What what would you use to convergence criteria? It's up to you what you want to use. And there is no strict rule about the convergence criteria. Uh, if you are very strict, yes, you will need many iterations. Many iterations mean more cost. But the thing is that if you are not strict enough, your convergence is poor. And if you run something like nonlinear time history analysis, Nonlinear time history analysis make use of the information from the previous step in that latter step calculation. So if you use the unconverged or poorly converged information from the previous step, of course, the next step will be affected and later on later on later on will be also affected so you might have like million of time steps calculation each time step you have nonlinearity but if your nonlinearity is uh, convergence was poor at the 10,000 step then the rest of the 10 uh, 1 million minus 10,000 step will be affected by that poor convergence. So your solution will be drift of the actual solution and it accumulates. The error accumulates over step. So so for, for the dynamic analysis, the scary thing is that you are not just wrong or you are not just getting approximation in this step. This adds up to the next step approximation. Next step use the wrong well, incorrect or not precise data as the basis for calculation. And then you have additional 
unconverged part adds up on the use of the unconverged solution and then you carry this on to the next step so everything accumulates over and over and over so if the criteria is to uh, lose uh, you end up with a problem uh, basically the convergence criteria will look at the well you, you can you can set it up in many ways the first way is to look at the original error so original error is something uh, pretty much like this you first introduce the approximate uh, let's say the approximate value of p axial force and then once you calculate you get this shear force you can compute the axial force value you get that difference right so if you initially say that the p is equal to zero and then you compute and you you find that the shear or that leads to the p is equal to 0.15 that is the first step error okay that is the difference between the assume compare with the calculated value you get that one and then you refine your solution by updating the axial force using maybe this one you drop in the value you get the new solution once you get the new solution let's check the error again so you come back to the p which is in there and then you have the new shear force you can compute the difference over here the difference over here will be smaller than before uh, well so you compare the difference here with the first step difference so you check error of the current step compare with the error of the first step if the structure is linear okay if it is completely linear well you will not get any error but if it is nonlinear, then you get some error so you compare this fraction of error to the original first step error if it is like one in a thousand normally the one in a thousand will be like the the borderline that's the worst criteria but sometimes it is acceptable so the borderline get it like okay you can you can get the error one in a thousand time of the first step so if you if you can satisfy that requirement in the step number two then you stop the calculation accept this solution and move forward to the next step if you don't get you don't fit within one in a thousand of the first step error then you refine the solution for another time and then recheck if it is within one in a thousand of the first step that could be one thing and that error could be on the axial force it could be on the DOF that is sensitive like DOF7 so you might go the other way around like looking at DOF7 solution and then see the next step so if your DOF7 changes from the original step okay uh, you can keep DOF7 for the original time okay as a baseline and then the change in the next step you compare with the original value of the uh, DOF7 value and then make sure that the change will not be more than one in a thousand times of the the value that could be done so actually there is as I mentioned there is no mathematical formulation for this error it is just the criteria you set up in order to monitor your solution so there will be some smart way to monitor sometimes people use energy do, uh, energy norm for the finite element analysis okay that there are many things that could be used but over here I think uh, the good indicators you can look at the axial force you can look at the displacement and when those parameters are not changing much we accept the solution 
Okay, but uh, in here I set the convergence criteria uh, using this axial force. So I just compare the axial uh, the the change with the previous step. It is not the first step here. It is just compare compare to refer to the previous step, which is okay. Uh, if it is very small, then it is even actually it is even more strict than comparing this to the original step alone right okay so percentage is more than we decide to stop and did we just put in okay so this is 0 0.06 and the other thing is the okay ah still And here, uh, I think you might see the thing is that this value were taken from the were taken from the previous load step. I didn't reset it to zero, so that makes the life a little easier. It doesn't take as many steps. You know, I, I have some force put there, which is the force that came from the previous step. Actually, if you want to start like from zero, it is possible, but it just takes you more steps. So the first step, you can see that if you have the assumption of zero force in these columns, you find the 100% error in this convergence cri criteria. Okay, so. I'm going to update the solution quality will not be as good as having something in there but you will end up with you will end up to the the same place anyway so good or bad assume force it doesn't really matter the iterative solution will bring you there now from 100 percent down to three percent but three percent looks good but it's not good enough so and then update it ha huh. okay quite good if you uh, a control freak or perfectionist freak then you keep going okay so this looks really nice I take this solution drop it there and that is for point oh seven Okay, keep going, nonlinearity, just keep going. Ah, and well continue. Point or eight. So as we start with this initial force, axial force in the step taken from the last one, then you can see that the error is not so big. then copy and paste them need another round and paste in not bad one more ah, okay up to you Paste in, paste in, okay, accept the solution here, put in there, and point oh eight. Hmm, quite clear, quite clear. We'll see if we can go up to point oh nine. Yeah, still doable. By the way, in order to make the solution, 
I mean, if you do homework, you better show like step by step. I, I, I run all these calculations in here without, without showing uh, the revision of the number. But when you do, you better show that how you revise, okay, how you update the number. Because if you do it just like this, then I, 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 I cannot know how you refine your solution. So copy, paste, copy, paste. Maybe you r record this in step, 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 step that, ah, you might not need to print out the whole thing, right? But you need to at least show that, okay, this is the first iteration. So this is the number you get. Maybe you also plot the displacement solution associated with that step. All right, so capture, capture, capture uh, these steps there. That that will be required even uh, well, especially when when it is the in the examination. Then without this, I cannot track your work. So please keep it. Ah, okay, not bad. Accept this solution. Point oh nine. <laughs> okay. Point one. Point one. Point one multiplied by five is point two five. Uh, uh, point 0.5 and then divide by 2 with 0.25 so update and update this one okay I need another round Okay, not bad. This is one in a thousand, uh, one in ten thousand. Mm. Ah, very stubborn. Okay, still can go. Uh, let's do a point one two to save time. Not uh, not that easy to converge. Uh, I think the figure just the convergence rate is not that good. Hmm, not that good. Not that good. Okay, that means we are close. Up there, this one. I I, I didn't count how many iterations ah okay you you can see now that it is very difficult swings back and forth the rate is quite bad slow convergence uh-huh error doesn't go just back and forth we'll see if we give it Maybe a few steps and it doesn't converge. I think we need to back it down to point one one. Ah, okay. It it, it, it doesn't converge. It it just come down but it will not converge. Point one one. Oops, no. Should 
24% ah, okay still quite large ah. copy and paste copy this one and paste okay 6% 4% ah, maybe okay okay still converge converging but a little slow huh okay it is going towards the good direction but it is just slow okay not bad uh, update again just difficult to converge okay yeah we can accept this solution Point one one. <clears throat> If you want more than yeah, point one one five to try, uh, but somewhere around here, I think uh, if we plot the straight line like this, uh, this is about two times or three times of the linear displacement. Uh, linear displacement is this one. If the system is linear, so oh. if the system is linear and at this load, So if it is linear at this load, which is this is point one, huh? point one six. This is point six eight. So this is roughly more than four times. Huh? One six, about four times. Point one six multiplied by four point six four. Okay, so more than four times already. So the nonlinear uh, deformation uh, compared, it's like uh, compared to to the U strain. This is this is three four times compared to U. Strain. Like, well, just 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 a quick try. Point one one. I just doubt if it can go to point one one five. I think it still converge. So I can just do the V. Okay, I just type the V and then copy and paste. Copy and paste. Uh huh. Still the error. Paste and V. No, cannot. slow convergence but I think we still have hope and update better record how many how many how many steps you take
do. Will be nicely converged. Nah, okay. Uh, let's accept this one point one one five, but we cannot go to the point one two. <coughs> so it is capped at the load roughly point one one five EI over L Q. That number multiplied by two point five. Point two, roughly point two, eight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, this case actually, the system is controlled by the column over here. Uh, this one is the weaker one, and as you apply the uniformly distributed load like this, uh, the load distribution. Uh, come to here quite a lot. It is not 50-50 because this is a hinge, but still, uh, I guess the buckling starts at this, at this point. You can also monitor this one, horizontal displacement for this one. If the local buckling is going to occur in this one here, then the horizontal displacement is going to show. If it doesn't fail by the sway mode. For example, if this column is very stiff, uh, the beam is very stiff and then it doesn't sway, and this one is very weak, then the buckling will go in the element buckling rather than the, the frame, overall frame buckling. Right. <coughs> 